Hello, Mum and Dad. Thank you for joining me for this. Um, this is yeah. off-brand for you and I, isn't it? It's quite what, sorry? Off-brand. It's to quite off-brand. To be yeah. doing Zoom and to be chatting. Like, I, I can safely say us three have all thought, like, worried about this looking a bit like um, one of those awful charity videos. Of, like, you know, two people <laughs> help us. But it's just going to be um, a nice informal chat. Um, it's National Epilepsy Week, so this is for young epilepsy. Um, okay. I've got some questions. The, the, the young epilepsy are doing this thing about um, how it's more than a seizure and how it affects different aspects of someone's life. So it might be about school, it might be about um, social life, work life, and one aspect of that is family, of which you two are very integral members. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now we know why we. At least now we know why we're here. <laughs> um, you never I mean, referred to before as an integral member. <laughs> well, I'm not an integral member for you. No, she said integral, not intelligent. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. I feel like this is suddenly going to turn into the roast of Maisie Adam. <laughs> so. How long ago would you say it was? I, in my head, I, I was 14, but I actually don't know that for a fact. It was around then, though, so about 10, 12 years ago. Yes. Yeah, it could have been a little bit earlier if we're being totally honest about it. Yeah. Um, but I know that you've spoken as well about um, that at first people just thought you were, you know, a bolshy teenager and rolling your eyes at us and ignoring yeah. us. And people had mentioned that about you before, <laughs> but because you were our little lovely, we didn't really want to believe that about you. And it, of course, it never occurred to us that it was actually something other than you being a bolshevik teenager. So it could have been a little bit earlier than that, but yeah. not. A I think it was about twelve months prior to that, where we just thought you were being more, <laughs> a bit more rude than usual, <laughs> ignoring ignoring what we were saying. But yeah. turns out. Yeah wasn't the case no no so this is when I was rolling eyes and just coming across a bit vacant um, yeah every, every now and yeah. then yeah, yeah. we would ask you to tidy your room and there'd be no response for a few <laughs> seconds and then yeah. you'd roll your eyes it's and it's just difficult to differentiate between just being yeah. a little cow no, but we'd think well that's a bit rude because we've only asked her once <laughs> and uh, it was each week <laughs> but you were also our first child so you know live, learning all the way I bet you felt so easy when he just didn't have a seizure when you asked him to to tie yeah. the room. <laughs> exactly, we knew yeah. what, we knew what we were dealing with. Yeah, this is so so much more easy going. Yeah, totally. Um, and so uh, fast forward, I guess around twelve months to when it actually was di a, a diagnosis. Um, yes. The question is is um, how did you feel? Did you feel anything in particular? Was it a shock or like did you think it was going to be something a bit less dramatic or serious? I, I don't think we really knew what to expect actually. I think I think it would be fair to say that when we um, first got your appointment for your first appointment for a you know a check at the hospital and we went didn't we yeah. and um, I, I think I think it would be fair to say that the uh, equipment, if that's the right word, that they attach to you oh God, yeah. for the diagnosis looked a little bit old fashioned. I think I was quite surprised at that. It looked like something from a Doctor, a Doctor Who. Yeah, Doctor Who or a 1950s space age thing. It didn't. It's it, that thing it where was, it stuck all the bits and bobs to my Yeah. Head. Mm. Yeah, and I don't think we were expecting it to be quite so... I mean, I know it wasn't basic, but it, it looked like we'd sort of gone through the doors of the hospital and gone back in time. Yeah. And uh, and then, you know, you see your most precious thing ever with these, what I would call, electrodes on your head. And that mm. was that was quite... Um, Oh wow! What is this? You know that that that's uh, that yeah. that's not quite what we were expecting. I think we expected to sit in a circle and talk about how you were, and this still wasn't. A, <laughs> no. I don't think it, I wouldn't say it was a, it was a shock. No, because there's also a bit of relief, obviously. You just know what it was when you're sat sat there like that. You know, we're thinking, has she got a brain? And looking, <laughs> are they looking for a brain somewhere? Is there another issue here? But turns out, 
nothing to worry about in that department. So actually, yeah, the whole yeah. epilepsy thing was, you know, it was like, right, okay, so it's at least we know what it is. It's got a name, and it's and it's a name you've heard about before, yeah, yeah, and reasonably common. Yeah, so not some not something really, you know, off the wall. Nobody, you know, yeah. really, really rare, which is what nobody wants to hear, really, is it? You know. And yeah. I think the other thing at that at that time as well that because you know in in in, um, in everyday life you don't engage in a diagnosis of something you hear about things yeah and I guess what we have learned is that uh, we weren't on our own in assuming that the word epilepsy had an equal sign after it and meant you know, that sort of stereotypical flashing light. collapse on the floor, flashing lights and all of that. Yeah. And all of a sudden you thought, oh, blimey, that is, that's what she's got. And it isn't that. So that was quite interesting as well to learn that there's a whole spectrum yeah. of, uh, of yeah. seizures as opposed that's to fits and all of that kind of language that. that goes goes with it. Yeah. Um, and your epilepsy had nothing to do with me coming and dragging you out of a disco about a year later. <laughs> no, that's true, yeah. At midnight. Yeah. It was nothing, nothing to do with epilepsy and, and disco flashing lights. No. No, no, I can safely say I've, I've always enjoyed a safe and responsible disco. Um, <laughs> but even, even those subcategories, even those subcategories have changed though, like, I know you just said Petty Mart, it's not called that anymore, is it? They've changed that name. You, they're now yeah, not called... Yeah. yeah, it was only, only known as that for yeah. Very short after the diagnosis, they did stop it and yeah. referred to child childhood absence. I think absence, absence seizures, seizures, never bolshiness. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah. the next question. Um, <laughs> I can. Uh, I, I I said to mum earlier. I can already <laughs> imagine her. Pardon the pun. Rolling her eyes at this question, but um, genuine. I suppose has it changed? our relationship in any way do you think no 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 so it, well instantaneously it improved it because obviously <laughs> we then realized that you weren't actually being rude all those years that's true yeah there was something yeah. there was a reason behind it which wasn't just ratty parents or, or, or ratty child so yeah from that point of view no it didn't change it at all i don't think it did i think um it was it was just something it wasn't something that we reacted to or started you know behaving as if we were on thin ice or no, no. Uh, or that we had to be overly cautious about it was just mm. oh right oh so that explains that let's yeah. get on with it it, and was, it, was quite a, it was quite an easy um we were quite lucky in that the medication that, that was suggested worked pretty effectively pretty quickly so yeah, it did. going through a lot of you know trial and error sort of solutions or anything like that it was like this is the problem we'll diagnose it try this and, and what they tried yeah with. and i think uh without wishing to embarrass you as well you've always been somebody who isn't determined in a negative sense but you've always just gone and got on with things oh. so there was never a, a a time where we thought oh i wonder if she'll be able to or oh i do hope it doesn't stop her doing that it was never a case of that it was more a case of what are you up to oh my word you're going to jump out of an aeroplane are you sure that's safe yeah oh, I forgot about that. but it wasn't because of the epilepsy it was because you were jumping out of the plane you know so so it wasn't, it, it, it never occurred to us that it would be prohibitive in any way, um, no. and indeed it isn't. No, no, um, and I think at that point when it was, um, I forget the name of it now, what was the name of the pill? Epilim. Yes. Epilim. Yeah. That was so, uh, sort of, so effective and so easy to take as well. As you say, it's not like you're having to go, you know, Maisie has to not be able to do this because you're having to inject this a day or no. go for these appointments. It's, you know, you're talking about taking a tablet in the morning and a tablet at night, which worked very effectively. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I do remember, I do, I do remember that it was at a time when it sort of coincided with you having your first 
iPhone or mobile phone, I don't know which it was, that, that you know where you can set an alarm as a reminder in a diary? Mm. And I do remember in the early days you doing that so that you remembered to take your tablet. Um, and it was your it was, voice, wasn't it? I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's the recording think... of your voice going, Maisie, it's your mother, take your pills. Oh, yes, that's right, it was. And it went off yeah, one of my me. exams. <laughs> and then following that was obviously once you'd remembered to take them because you'd had a, an alarm, then it was the after, did I take them? Which is when Dad suggested get one of those little boxes, you know, with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Remember that? Remember when I, got, I came back with one of those? I was so pleased. I got it from the chemist. Yeah. Said, Look, you, and then you'll know because yeah. if it's not there, if there's only two, if there's, if there's four left and not two, then you've, you've missed this morning's. Didn't go down well, did it? What a great fashion accessory. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that wasn't cool to, to carry around with you. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm just going to the cinema with my friends. I'll just take my, my case of pills. <laughs> yeah, it works for your granny and your nana. Yeah, because they're not going to the cinema with their friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, did, you, did you learn anything about it that surprised you? I guess you've sort of covered that a little bit in terms of the, like, subcategories, but um, did you learn anything either about the medication or about me post-diagnosis, I guess? I think we learned in terms of the medication, we learned of, about slow release. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think we learned that it wasn't something to be frightened of. Uh, you know, I, I, and I'm sure there are some people who get a diagnosis of epilepsy and think, "Oh my word!" But I, I you know, we were Once you really it was manage manageable. It was manage yeah. well managed by. Get, once you found the right tablets, then yeah, we were really well, you know, informed by everybody who was involved. Um, and then I guess, uh, you know, at the risk of sounding overly not, I hope not too overly serious, you learn that people misjudge or misequate things. So you say, that, you know, like we were saying before, you say the word epilepsy, and people think that that is what it is, and actually, it isn't. There's a whole you know, range of, 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 of different ways it presents itself. And with, and with you, um, it was just that... Being rude. Being yeah, rolling of eyes. And yeah. at times a little bit, you know, grander than that. But yeah. on the whole, it, it, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think as well, like, in terms of that going back against that subcategory thing that was maybe also what was quite frustrating about it in terms of like if you went on a school trip and you have to put down what the medical um uh conditions you have are i remember for the french exchange exchange writing having to say yeah. epileptic and then uh, you know a teacher sees that and immediately thinks hold oh, on oh. right she can't come to the school disco then or like You're quite right yeah we need to tell the french exchange's parent trying to explain in in french you're looking you're going to be looking after an epileptic for a week you know yes bon chance that's quite and also, yeah and also those those times when you went on um you know outdoor expeditions whether that was through social clubs that you were part of or school trips you know yeah. canoeing and all of that kind of thing then it was there was a there was a part of what how it impacted on us as your mum and dad that we then had to almost re-educate people that yeah. just because they saw that word that isn't the thing that they thought it was it isn't yeah. does yeah. that make sense it was quite a few act yeah. activists and things where we were i suppose surprised by the, re the the response yeah whether it was you know the obvious ones like rock climbing canoeing um up sailing, what were the other so the, the jumping bizarre out of ones, planes. you know, like well, jumping out of planes, that's fairly <laughs> but the, the reaction from some people, which yeah. was sort of once they've seen epilepsy on, on your form, yeah, sort of will, will, yeah. um, when I went, you got that, you got that, you got that first hand when you went traveling. I was gonna uh, say, when I went traveling with Danny, my brother, we went, uh, uh, scuba diving. Well, we were hoping to go scuba diving at the Great Barrier Reef. It started off with snorkeling and then we had to fill out a 
a declaration of health to say we're good to go scuba diving, we're good swimmers. And as you know, me and Danny have been water babies since we were tiny. Yeah. So dead excited. I thought it's better not to lie. So I put down, you know, I'm epileptic, but it's all controlled by this thing. I was by that point seizure free for well over five years. Didn't think anything of it. And the answer was so black and white. It was no, yeah. you, can't go. you can't go, can't go. I was like, no, like it's a lot more, you know, gray air than that. And there's different types of it. And I'm absolutely fine, I promise. No. And so I was, I mean, we loved it, much. but I was only allowed to go snorkeling. And even then I had to wear a big yellow noodle. <laughs> I remember. was instructed that on a whole protocol of if she looks like <laughs> she's dr drowning, you must wave the yeah. waddle shouting, what was it? Uh, emergency. Oh, I, I remember what it was. Was it emergency? Rescue, rescue, yeah. rescue. Rescue, rescue, rescue. rescue. But you, have to say it, you have to say it three times. But that, that is quite horrible. extreme. I mean, obviously, scuba diving and going down. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I understand Water it. It's, it's, it's probably the exception. Well when you're sort of all sort of, um, grouped together as one type. Of, yeah. Of... I, think, I think also another example, you know, um, because we're talking about Young Epilepsy Week, and so it's, uh, I'm presuming, school age yeah. people as well, which is your audience. I remember that when, uh, when you had your GCSE, and uh, because you, I know, I can see you smiling and laughing now, but I remember that, that you, because people saw that on your uh, paperwork, that there was somebody who was then hired in to make sure that you kept focus on the papers. Do you remember? And it was somebody that when you were looking out of the windows, thinking about your answer, the person thought that you were perhaps rolling your eyes and just vaguely looking out of the window and would bang on the desk to, yes. to get you back well, on the Just to watch me, bearing in mind my last name is Adam as well, so I was sat at <laughs> the front. Uh, but you were going to be in a different room, if you remember. Oh God, yes, for some of them I was in a different room, but she was she was told to sit like a metre away from me, and any time <laughs> I looked remotely vacant, which again is such a vague term, you know, what kid doesn't look <laughs> vacant from time to time? During an exam, yeah. Banging, yeah. banging the table to bring me back round. It's like, oh, I was just thinking of the answer, Karen. Can't or just, <laughs> or just completely ruin your, your concentration. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we learned a few things like that. Yes. Yes. Um, what was it like supporting a teenager? And I suppose, as you say, with young epilepsy, teenager being the operative word there with epilepsy. And and did it did it change over time? The older I got, or the 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 more, I know this is only something we've actually only recently discussed, but the, as I changed in terms of got, got older and also the condition changed in that it wasn't just um, absent seizures. Um, yeah. And I should point out here, I've spoken about it on stage, but not necessarily, I've, I've mentioned it in this interview, that I wasn't 100% honest with having those types of seizures with you until quite a significant no. amount of time later. So I, I understand it's difficult for you to kind of comment on those but what was it like supporting a teenager with that sort of well I, th I think as parents also we were at times suspicious that there was maybe something more and then you really are because you're a teenager you know that you, you you sort of are a bit on eggshells at times yeah and uh, yeah. and <laughs> i don't know I, I suppose we just, just, uh, just it, ran with it. Really. We just ran with it. I was going to say we just dealt with it. Um, I think we're really lucky uh, in that with you and your brother, you know, we have we have a really good relationship, don't we, as a family? That yeah. we're just mates as well as parents and yeah. children, and and you've always been very close to Danny as well. Um, uh, and so there wasn't sort of hidden talk or secrets. It was just that I think at times you were, you know, for uh, understandably wanting to be out with your mates and, you yeah. know, learning, learning, you know, how to deal with alcohol and socialising and early, early mornings or late nights, however you want to describe them. All teenagers go through that. I guess that there was just an added query sometimes as, oh, I hope that's going to be okay. Or as dad says about 
I hope she's remembered to take her tablets or, yeah. you know, all of that kind of thing. And when yeah. you started going off to festivals and all of that kind of, all of that sort of di yeah. dynamic and uh, dimension, yeah. that you were, A, being sensible, but also what happens if, and were your mates going to be there for you and understand what to do? And yeah. I think, yeah, just got on with it. Yeah, yeah no, for sure. I think, I think that's definitely true. And, and, you're right like we've always sort of been really close and, and got on in that way um and the 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 secrecy that was there was i have to many from my end was never from a place of like i can't talk to them about it i can't say that it no. was but like you know you, you were very understandable you know parental about it and it was more that like if i disclose that i've had this thing they won't let me go to that festival because they know I can't be trusted to take yes. it. So it was all a very juvenile reason, a very typical teenager reason. And I, like, I, I, as we've since like spoken about, and you've seen the show that I did about it, the first tonic clonic seizure I had was at a festival. Um, yes. And I think a big part of why I didn't tell you that was when I came back was, well, I sort of proved <laughs> what they're always nagging me about of going, did you know yeah. your tablets? And I go, yes, yes, I did. And then yeah. I was in sort of this burst of independence and forgot one one morning to take them. Paid paid a pretty hefty price, and then was like, I don't. It's almost a bit of a pride thing as well. I don't want to concede that you know they their worries are quite um, justified and quite you know yeah. they do right to double check that I've taken my tablets. They do right to do all of those things. And there was a pattern to how you were with that. Yeah when you were on that particular uh, tablet as well. And of course, as you've got older, that's changed as well, yes. that your medication has changed and yes. uh, you've changed and, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, there used to be, I know, remember like conversations in an early morning, which is usually when, if you were gonna be vacant, that would be when it was. And one of you would go, uh, you know, you'd be talking to me and you'd sort of look at me like that and go, have you taken your tablets? And I'd be like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> really like like snapping yes. but I was I'm snapping just, because I knew that deep down I'd taken them a bit late you know yeah I got up at eight but didn't take them till 11 something like that so it was always sort of, I guess yeah you got up when? we always knew huh you got up at eight yeah when was that well back in back in the time when I had to be up for school obviously don't get up <laughs> at eight anymore I should point out that last night we facetimed and I said that I got up early to go and sunbathe and Getting up early was 11 a.m. Yes. Mm. Um, okay, <laughs> final, final advice. Uh, final question, beg your pardon. What advice would you give to people in a similar situation? So I guess people who've got a child who's going for a diagnosis for the first time or somebody who's been diagnosed and speaking to their parents about it. Uh, number one, don't overreact, I suppose be pragmatic about yeah. it and just just run with it because there's no other way to approach it really if you start running around like headless chickens it doesn't really help anyone and even if it's a shock at the beginning it's if you the, i think it becomes easier when you do run with it and take up you know listen to people who are obviously the experts and yeah the correct diagnosis of it and yeah. how it's dealt with and what the long-term uh, outcome is from it, then, yeah, I think it's just, you yeah, know, your mum and, awesome. and I have always taken the, the approach on a lot of things, you know, that there's always somebody worse off than yourself and, you know, or think what it could have been, you know, or... Yeah, that's very you. Uh, that's very you. Is that very but, you? But worrying isn't going to solve anything, worrying is it? Worrying never solved anything, no, so... Saying, you worry as a, as a level of concern and yeah. care worries are valid for sure but not to be to the point where it it, it starts to intrude on day to day what, on day-to-day -day living and mm. all the opportunities that you should have yeah and and do have yeah um you know and i and, and i think i think you were really good as well on being open with your friends and I think that's really important because for all the reasons that we've said before, they like you because you, you, and it's just part of you. Yeah. And 
they want to be knowing what to do or what to expect or and that it's okay and uh, and, and and if you don't do that uh, ironically it, it, it works against you yeah it makes it harder for yourself so you know I, 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 that's what i would say is you know run with it it is what it is and get on with it and there are people out there to help you and there are people out there to help your mums, dads, carers, or whoever it is that you live with. And there's great advice out there if and when you should need it. Did you feel, I've never asked you this, this isn't a question, did you feel supported? Did you feel like there was appropriate amount of support and if you ever had a question, it was you were able to find answers quite easily and efficiently? Or yeah it's a difficult question nowadays with the internet and everything so so readily accessible yeah and that's a double-edged sword in itself which can give you you know good <laughs> information Google can give you says you're gonna die yeah. give you yeah. good information give you the wrong information but yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say that we ever thought we were cut off and had nobody to i mean obviously your doctor is is you know number one first stage but i think there was a lot of people out there that had we needed them yeah we would have been able to I think we did. I mean, I, I mean, I know we did. When we went to yeah. the hospital and you were diagnosed, you got contact cards for people, and um, you got packs and things, yeah. to, uh, uh, explanatory packs. I mean, I, I'm I'm not so sure. <laughs> I can yeah, see I'm not see, how much of those pamphlets did we read, Mum? Pardon? How much of those pamphlets did we read? I, I'm going to say, I'm not so sure that we're the best people to be asking that question to. We're never good with the pamphlet. <laughs> um, but there, there are lots of things out there. I do remember having them. And they went in that drawer. <laughs> the Chinese takeaway <laughs> menu. Yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, on a serious note, they're there. And aren't we lucky that we never had to call on them? But if we had to... They were there and we could have done. Amongst all yeah. the bits and bobs. Bits and bobs. <laughs> the bits and bobs. Bits and bobs and <laughs> Along with menu. the three batteries, a plug, an adapter, and a Chinese menu takeaway. And a golf ball. And a golf That's ball. The yeah. draw. And the so. three and the three screwdrivers that you get out of a cracker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as it's a private <laughs> place. <laughs> yeah. Main thing is they were there. They were there. Should we have needed them? <laughs> yeah.